What is the best way to see some of the amazing sights that make Iceland such a remarkable country? Hi everyone, this is your world. And welcome to it, where I talk about my visits to some interesting places. I'm Bill Bernstein. This video is about some of the great things we saw as we visited some of the most well-known attractions in that unique island, Iceland. This was during a cruise we took aboard the ship, the Viking Sky. And I'll give you some ideas about the ship toward the end of this video, but I want to dive right into the details of what we saw. We arrived in Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland, a day before the cruise. It's always a good idea to do that if you're on a cruise, just to be safe. You don't want to miss the sailing. Some things we saw in Reykjavik included the famous Sun Voyager sculpture and the Hallgrimskirkja church with the statue of Leif Erikson in front. After boarding the wonderful Viking Sky, your tour comes later. Our excursion the next day was near Reykjavik itself before sailing. Our first visit on the first excursion was to a geothermal area. The word geyser that we use today originated from one in this area. Then we went to Gullfoss, probably the most famous waterfall in Iceland, a country that's home to about 10,000 waterfalls. You heard that right, 10,000. There is a legend that when investors were going to buy the area to construct a dam, a woman named Sigridur sued and then threatened to throw herself in the falls if it were so. Our next stop was the area where the North American tectonic plate meets the Eurasian tectonic plate. In this area, they say you're standing in both America and Europe. It's the effect of these tectonic plates moving apart that created Iceland and continues to add to its growth a little bit every year. This is also what causes the many volcanoes in Iceland, home to roughly 130 volcanoes, about 30 of which remain active. And it leads to the geothermal activity there. The hot water in homes, hotels, everywhere is pumped from the ground. Close to 100% of the energy used on the island is from renewable sources and Iceland generates 25% of its electricity from geothermal activity. That evening we sailed from Reykjavik, taking in some beautiful views of Iceland from the Viking sky. Reaching Isafjordur the next morning, seeing more beautiful scenery before docking and disembarking for our excursion by boat to Vigur Island. Vigur Island is known for the puffins and arctic terns that spend the summer there. But we were there at the end of August, and they left a couple of weeks before we arrived. On our visit, we learned that the puffins dig holes in the ground to lay their eggs, and after the young hatch, the parents fly south for the winter. The young crawl out of the ground and leave about two weeks after their mothers, yet somehow they find their way to meet up with the flock. They're using Mother Nature's GPS. You have to admit, they are really cute. One great benefit of cruising with Viking is that one excursion in each port is included in the basic price. That afternoon, we went to a village near Isafjordur. We listened to a local fisherman and concluded with a really delightful stop at a small stream coming from a waterfall. Clear, fresh, pure water. The next morning, we found ourselves approaching the town of Akureyri. Our excursion there took us to see the lava grottoes of Dimeborgesh. These lava formations were caused during the last ice age, when a volcano under the ice erupted, and as the lava flowed up through the ice, the cold hardened the lava into these interesting shapes. Then we visited the hot sulfuric mud springs and gurgling sulfur cauldrons, which are also pretty impressive. From there we went to another real highlight of any visit to Iceland, Godafoss waterfall. Another great story. When Christianity was beginning to spread in Iceland, the chieftains met to decide whether they should continue to worship the Norse gods or convert. The legend is that the speaker meditated on it overnight, then decided that public worship would be in the new religion, but that people could keep their old idols at home if they wished. To show his own belief, he threw the idols of the gods he had at home that he had worshiped into the falls. After another special meal and a good night's sleep, we found ourselves docked near Sirisordur. Kim went on the excursion into the town while I relaxed, enjoying the beautiful views from the Viking sky, even watching some jellyfish. Then that afternoon, 
we took advantage of the thermal spa. And I'll tell you about that later when I give you a tour of the ship. Although we hoped to get a glimpse of the northern lights that night from the ship, at least I got to take this photo of the moon using my cell phone. I'm not promoting the phone, I'm just saying. It made me happy. It's a Samsung 21 Ultra for anyone interested. The next morning we docked and set off on an excursion that we were really excited about. After passing many beautiful scenes, including another ice lagoon similar to the one we were going to that had ice fallen from the glacier, we finally arrived at the Vyatsarlan ice lagoon. We boarded a Zodiac, which is a large inflated raft holding about 10 people. There were almost an unlimited number of high points on this whole cruise, but this would be one at the top. The seals were too relaxed really to pay too much attention as we passed by. That ice we are holding is about 600 years old. Now, before we get to the last day of the cruise, let's back up and I'll show you some great things about Viking and the ship we were on. We arrived at the ship a bit early and were allowed to board. We were given lanyards to wear at all times. Everyone was tested for COVID every day. Fortunately, no one tested positive on our cruise. Because we were early, we had time to explore a bit and get a feel for the ship. In addition to the buffet at the World Cafe, all Viking Ocean ships have the main restaurant called the restaurant, as well as the two specialty restaurants, the Italian restaurant Manfredi's, where we ate a couple of great meals, and the chef's table, which I'll tell you more about in a minute or so. I'll just say that we were impressed by everything about the ship and the attention that Viking gives to detail. Every stateroom has a veranda and the bathrooms are large enough to move around in with heated floors, really nice touch. I have to tell you that it wasn't long before we were looking forward to every meal. That tends to happen on the cruise as there's always a focus on food. Even the buffet, the World Cafe, has food that's so appealing. One night we bypassed a reservation in another restaurant when the World Cafe was having a special seafood night. Although I'm a vegetarian, my wife eats seafood and some chicken. We both loved every meal. The gourmet restaurant, the chef's table, has a fixed menu, and I always got a specially prepared, amazing vegan meal there. It was my favorite restaurant, but many think that Manfredi's, the Italian, is the best. Kim might choose the World Cafe, and we had lunch there every day that we were on board at lunchtime. The last day, a visit to the Westman Islands was scheduled, but bad weather kept us at sea, so we spent some quality time in the thermal spa. There's no charge for using this room on Viking ships, another great benefit. The pool with its water jets is actually a bit warmer than the jacuzzi next to it and makes me ready for another Viking cruise. It was another real onboard highlight. After the pool, we went in the steam room and from there to the snow grotto. Yes, it snows. We couldn't bring ourselves to do the ice bucket challenge, but there were a lot of souls that were braver than we were and loved it. So you should think about giving it a try. Besides the excursions into the sites, we enjoyed all the time we spent on board the ship. All the Viking ocean going ships are structured the same, so I could really be talking about any of them. But we finally docked in Reykjavik. Time to disembark. We had great guides on the excursions we took. We didn't worry about packing or unpacking. And because Viking ships are not as large as those of many other lines, with a maximum of 930 passengers, we never felt that the group we were with on each excursion was too large. If you want to learn more about the specifics of cruising, in addition to this and any future videos I'll post, there are many great YouTube channels about cruising you can check out. I learned a great deal from Tips for Travelers. In Reykjavik, our last day before leaving, we went to the Blue Lagoon late in the afternoon. This is another one of the country's famous attractions, hot mineral water coming from the ground. The mineral content of the water is supposed to work wonders. It felt great, and we stayed in the water at least a couple of hours. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, be sure to hit subscribe below. You can click on this link to my video about a tour we took to the most visited sites in Italy. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, so long from all of us here in your world.